Hi, and welcome back to the Ant Saban YouTube channel. In today's content, it will be a speeded up ant feeding video. It is the most exciting moment for any ant keeper to be able to feed their ants. Something about watching them swarming over the food, or watching them work together to break down the food you gave them, is absolutely rewarding. Therefore, the star of this feeding video will be my Asian marauder ant, the Karebra ant colony. It will be a fitting colony for this feeding video, and you will see what I mean in just a moment. These ant species are highly sought after, especially the Karebra diversa, and they are popular among the ant keeping community. Karebra go through a very rapid reproductive life cycle in which they produce a mountain of beige colored eggs, larvae, and pupae. In no time at all, you will have a massive colony with proper care given. What attracts ant keepers to this species is the appearance of a minor worker ant and a major worker ant of diverse sizes. The minor workers of this species are known to have yellowish or reddish brown bodies, whereas the major workers are reddish brown or blackish brown in color. Its head is larger, square, and built like a tank. This being the Karebra species, the diet of this ant is omnivorous and tends to feed on insects or sweet dews from plants and nectar-producing insects. They will potentially feed on dying or dead mammals. These ants are known to form large hunting or raiding trails in the wild and are known to be active during the day and night. Karebra are fed daily, and I feed them a variety of common insectoids at random. For the first time, I got a special request from one of my fellow subscribers. You do not want to miss the last feeder insect, which I am going to show you at the end of this video, so stay tuned. For now, we will start with something simple. I am feeding them Zephobas morio, also known as the superworms. For those who follow my channel know, I prepare my superworms before I feed any of my colonies. Instead of giving them whole, I give them chopped up superworms. Mostly because I want them to get to the flesh easily and that would shorten the time it takes for them to finish them. Over the long period I have had them with me, I have noticed a behavior that maybe not all land keepers will notice. That is, how they treat each type of feeder insect differently. Take, for instance, superworms. The colony always buries them with soil and only processes them after they are gone from sight. They do this every time I give them superworms, rather than carrying the chunks into the nest entrance. For those who do not know, all ants need both a source of protein and a source of carbohydrates. In most cases, the source of protein should usually be animal-based in the form of insects and carbohydrates in the form of sugar. Let us observe them for a little bit longer. On any other day, I fed them crickets. To pre-kill crickets, you may watch my previous video on how to prepare them. There are many other ways people do it, either freeze or boil and by crushing the head. Another thing you may want to take precaution against is that some feeder insects carry parasites, and just crushing the heads may not be the safest for your loving ant colony. Remember what I said about their behavior on specific insect feeders? For crickets as feeders, they behave differently towards them. Instead of burying the cutout crickets, they would swarm over them. Breaking down the crickets is done right on the surface, leaving carcasses strewed in the corner of the nest once they are finished. This is the time when the hollowed out cricket bodies are light enough to be carried. This makes picking up their garbage so much easier. Isn't it amazing? On the other hand, shells or body parts of the superworm don't resurface or are thrown at the garbage site. Only the cricket parts are there. Protein feeding should change based on colony size. Crickets have a higher protein content per gram than superworms. Remember that protein is eaten by the larvae and queens of a colony while the adults eat carbohydrates. You can give other types of feeders, such as store-bought roaches or those you have bred yourself, as they will be a good source of protein. Another question I get asked a lot is if pre-dried insects can be fed to ants. In my experience, they seem to have no interest in dried up insects, which I believe only consist of dead insect shells and have little to no nutritional value. 
It is not an alternative food source, and if you are particular about killing live insects, I would suggest store-bought food powder or protein jelly. I must advise these foods to be treated as supplements and not as their main diet. The following feeder insect, which I am giving to my Carebra ant colony, might be a little surprising to some of you. I am feeding them a weakened Carebra queen which I scooped out of a drain. It was filled with water after a long downpour. There was a ripple in the drain and that's how she caught my eye. I believe she was in the water for a long time, as she wasn't really moving much once I got her home. It is a beautiful, reddish-colored queen. I mentioned a couple of times that she is a queen, the reason being that for Carebra species, if they remove the wings, it's almost certain that she is fertile. This is based on my experience of capturing and raising many queens during the founding stages of my ant-keeping journey. In the beginning, I wasn't sure what my colony would do to her almost lifeless body. Will my colony bring her back to life by treating her as another egg-laying queen? Or will she be food for them? If you notice, at the first encounter with this queen, the workers weren't showing any aggression although she was still moving. I cannot really tell what the outcome is going to be, as she is dragged closer and closer to their many nest entrances. Again, this is another behavior of my Carebra. They are not burrowing or feasting on the surface like what you see with the superworms or crickets. This time, the workers shove her lifeless body into the narrow nest entrance and vanish in front of our eyes. For what it's worth, becoming food or bringing her back to health are both beneficial for them. Don't you think so? Let's watch them attempt to haul her to the nest entrance. Along with the Carebra Queen, I captured some extra wild male alates that were scattered on the ground, and I thought they could be stars as our next feeders. Yes, they are still alive and no, they will not survive past dawn in the wild. What better way to reward their efforts during their nuptial flights than to be eaten by birds, geckos, frogs, or even other wild ants? On the subject of feeding wild insects to your colony, there is no right or wrong with feeding them to your colony. However, as I have said again, one should pay attention to whether they are free of parasites by just making sure visually there aren't any on them. I may not be 100% sure, but I am taking my chances with my Carebra colony, so I have read that one of their diets includes mites. Again, I must stress that wild insects carry a higher risk of carrying parasites, which may be transferred to the ant colony. So do take note. The male alates are definitely struggling and, for sure, they look like they are going to be food. They are totally covered by the small minor workers as well as some smaller majors who play a role in holding down their prey. Again, they are being dragged into the nest like what happened to the queen before. Another behavior of feeding, as I have predicted. I do not recommend feeding live insects to smaller Carebra colonies as they will be unable to take them down. However, if you want to feed live insects, I believe that fruit flies or red runner roaches are a better alternative for live feeding on smaller ant colonies. Carebra species will eat seeds and grains as part of their diet in the wild. There are many different viable options to feed them. For the final feeding, I am sure many of you would have already known what was going to be fed to my Carebra ant colony just by looking at the video thumbnail. Let me explain a little about how this video came about. I get a lot of requests for a feeding video, and yes, feeding videos are everyone's favorite. I mentioned in the very beginning of this video that it is the most exciting moment to witness your own colony feeding and watch them grow from all the care you have given to them. So, I have here the Ants Subong channel subscriber, a patron, as well as a fan of mine who wanted me to feed the live centipede he found in his garden. Not only was he wanting me to feed, but he also wanted it to be recorded for his viewing pleasure. I politely declined his offer, or should I say, declined his wild proposition, by reluctantly saying that I do not feed live insects to my colony. In fact, the truth is, I was very afraid of centipedes, especially big ones. Yes, it is big for me from how I see it. He just calmly replied that he would pre-kill it first before passing it to me. Well, in my mind, since he wanted a video of my ants feeding on it, I might as well make a full feeding video and good content out of it. Now let us begin with the feeding. At first, they don't seem to be interested in the centipede, not the kind of swarming that I would expect. I waited a while longer and the intensity was still subpar. 
I decided to make a few cuts along its body to entice the colony so that they would rise from their subterranean nest. I knew they had more numbers than this. Cutting the centipede could also help them reach the insides easier. I was not sure if I should remove the head, so I left it on. I was afraid that it might be a poisonous species and that somehow the poison could be ingested by my ants. I do not know if the poison will cause any harm, and it is probably too late now. What do you guys think? Will my Karebara colony bury the food? Or consuming it on the surface? Or dragged it into the nest? I'm noticing that the swarm is getting larger as time goes by. Their reaction to the centipede is unlike any other food I've given them. It seems that the entire colony is up there working on it now. Look at the sheer quantity of workers and major just to move the centipede millimeters closer to the nest entrance. This could be the first major swarm I have seen in months, and I do not know how my colony was doing, but now I certainly do. We now know that Karebra species eat almost everything. Those which I did not include in my feeding videos are pet food and human food. Although human food should be in their diet, I would avoid foods with added preservatives. But otherwise, it's okay to give them a reasonable amount of human food, such as boiled eggs and chicken pieces. Upon finishing this video, I would like to say that keeping this species can be a little difficult as they grow to a certain size. To successfully keep them is through research and a little common sense. The basic rules of ant keeping are just a few simple processes you need to follow. Once you master all of that, they can actually be easy to care for. That is all for now. Thank you for watching the Ant Saban YouTube channel.